Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking about quadratic equations. So here we have a nice uh, quadratic equation, y equals x squared. So what I'd like you to do is solve this equation and graph this equation. And tell me what's the connection between the graph and the solutions. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to solve this equation and graph this and talk about uh, the connections between graphs and solutions. This is very, very important for those of you out there that are studying algebra. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the solution. And I'll show you the graph here in a second. But the solution to this equation is x is equal to positive and negative 2. So these are actually two solutions, so you can kind of express that this way. The first, uh, first solution, excuse me, is a positive square root of 2. And the second solution here is a negative square root of 2. So just kind of, um, kind of review some basic stuff here uh, just before we get into more of the solution here. This is, again, a quadratic equation because it's a little 2 up here. This is what we call a second-degree polynomial. So there is going to be two solutions. There will always be two solutions to quadratic equations. And of course, we just uh, have them right here listed out. So our first one is positive uh, square root of 2, and our second is negative square root of 2. But in shorthand, in mathematics, it's just pretty common just to write uh, both of these solutions this way. Now, what is the connection between the solutions and the graph? Well, I'll get into that. Uh, in much more detail here in a second, but namely uh, where a graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so here we have a basic x-y axis here. So if you have a function or some sort of a, you know polynomial function or other type of function where a graph crosses the x-axis, you can see in this uh, quick example, this location here would be a location of what we call a real solution or a real root. Okay, so there is a connection between uh, the graph of a function and its respective solutions. And of course, I'll get into that uh, in much more detail in just one second. But for those of you out there that did get this right, at least uh, were able to solve this particular quadratic equation, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+. Plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you understand quadratic equations and their graphs and the type of roofs, uh, roots excuse me, and solutions they can have. So let's just kind of set this up here real quick. Now, in general, in algebra, again, let me just kind of draw my little x, y plane here. So what type of solutions can we have? Well, you can have basically two types. So where a uh, graph okay, crosses the x-axis, these locations here will be called real roots, real solutions. And of course, these would be part of the real number set. Now let's suppose a graph does not cross the x-axis, maybe something like this. And you can hear I'm kind of sketching out some uh, basic parabolas, which is the basic shape of a quadratic function. So if we have a parabola and it's above or below the x-axis, i.e. it's not crossing the x-axis, well, these um, uh, quadratic equations or quadratic functions have no real solutions, Okay, i.e., to have real solutions, uh, uh, solutions that are part of the real number set, that graph would have to cross the x-axis. So these here would have complex or imaginary number solutions. So that is basically the connection between graphs and solutions. And this is really, really big for those of you that are going to be studying Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, uh, especially when you um, are studying uh, how to solve more challenging polynomial equations. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. And here we have uh, the function or the equation y equals x squared minus 2. 
So how do we graph this? Well, what we want to do is just think of the basic graph y equals x squared. So here we have y equals x squared minus 2, but we should know what y equals x squared looks like. Well, the y equals x squared graph is just a basic parabola, and a parabola is a U-shaped graph like this. This is the standard um, graph for quadratic equations, and y equals x squared is going through the origin, i.e. this point here, this location, 0, 0. So this is something that um, all of you out there should know. If you're studying, uh, this would probably be like an Algebra 1 level um, uh, material that we're discussing. So if you're in pre-algebra, you may not be studying this yet. If you're in Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, this should be something that you know. Now, before we get uh, continue on any further, if you're like already a little bit lost here and you need additional help with this, I would direct you towards my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course to learn all this and much, much more. Okay, so here is our basic y equals x squared graph. So what is y equals x squared minus 2? Well, minus 2, it means that it's going to pull down this graph or translate this minus 2 on the y-axis. So let's go and take a look at that right here. So here is y equals x squared. So y equals uh, x squared minus 2 is this same graph, but we're just translating it down negative 2. So again, this comes into the topic of how to graph parabolas and uh, just functions in general. Okay, we call these translations. And a translation is basically taking the basic graph, like in this example, x squared, and either moving it up or down, left and right. And of course, we can do things like reflect it, in other words, flip it, and even stretch these things out. So that, you know, this whole topic of translations, shifts and things like that is a big topic uh, in and of itself. But um, anyways, hopefully you're like, oh yes, I understand that this minus two means we're just gonna pull this graph, graph down, negative two on the y axis. So here is our same graph. And we're going to just pull it down, and so it would look something like this. All right, so here's the graph, y equals x squared minus 2. Now, you can see here our original uh, basic uh, graph or function here, y equals x squared, just bounced off the origin, 0, 0. But when we pull down uh, the graph, we translate down negative 2 on the y-axis, you can see it's clearly now crossing the x-axis at these locations right here. So if we can find these locations, these are going to be the real number solutions. And of course, we have uh, two solutions, as we should, as this is a quadratic equation. Now, knowing this uh, really comes in handy because let's suppose you had a graphing calculator and you didn't want to do the work. You can actually, there's a, like a little cursor function on your graphing calculator, you kind of just point it over here, hover over, and actually get these locations on the x-axis. And in fact, those would be the real number solutions. But in this case, this is not that difficult to solve. So let's go and do that now. So here is our equation y equals x squared minus 2. What we want to do is set this equal to 0. Okay. So if what we're really doing here we have y equals x squared minus 2. We're going to set this equal to 0. We're, we want to know where this graph is equal to 0, where y is equal to 0. Let's kind of go over here, make sure we understand this. So let's just focus in on the green graph. So you can see as it's approaching here, we have this is uh, negative. Here's negative 2 on y. Maybe this is like negative 1. It's getting closer and closer to 0. So at this point where it crosses the x-axis, i.e. the x-intercept, y is equal to 0 at this location. So that's why we set these equations equal to 0. So we're going to set x squared minus 2 equal to 0 and solve the remaining equation. And in this case, this is very easy because all we need to do is bring that 2 over to the other side. And we have x squared is equal to 2 to solve for x. All we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So when we do that, we have uh, the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 2 is going to be both positive and negative 2. And, of course, these are our two solutions. Okay, so, again, the main kind of idea of this video, really, um, uh, I would say 
The point of this video was to remind you that there is a deep connection between the graphs and solutions of equations in algebra. Okay, it doesn't have to be just quadratic equations. It could be any different type of function. So if you can graph something, whether you have a graphing calculator or if you know how to graph a function, that is going to give you a lot of clues to where the solutions are at or located at. And this is a um, big skill especially in more advanced mathematics like pre-calculus. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.